Hello everyone, our topic for today is all about genre. At the end of the lecture, you should be able to first examine the nature of genre, second, differentiate the general definition from the discourse-specific definition of genre, third, demonstrate understanding on the nature of big genres and subgenres or text types, and the compositional structure of genres, and finally, attribute the significance of genres to its communicative purpose. By now, I think you have gotten curious on why we need to talk about genres in a discourse class which is highly relevant to the study of language. That could be because of the fact that genres are somewhat relevant to literature. But I tell you this, that the study of genre matters more than you think in the field of discourse. Generally, genre is defined as a category of artistic composition, as in music or literature, characterized by similarities in form and style or subject matter. So this could be the definition which you also have with you since elementary days because since then you were oriented about the different genres of literature from poems or poetry to prose such as fiction and non-fiction to drama and right now we have the fifth genre of literature which is media but genre is a very important component of communication or discourse according to Mikhail Bakhtin there is the so-called speech genre. So he is the one who introduced this notion. And as a theorist and linguist at the same time, he was able to come up with the theory of speech genres. According to him, genre is a social phenomenon born by the specific goals and circumstances of human communication. That is, a particular scientific technical, commentarial, business, everyday function, and the particular conditions of speech communication specific for each sphere give rise to particular genres. Hence, genres are driven by communication, and communication functions because of a specific context. Also, according to him, genre is an inseparable unity of thematic content, style or linguistic choices, and compositional structure. So this now has something to do with the composition of the message. And genres are not created by us as speakers, but are given to us. Once again, it is driven because of communication process, which has a specific context in its core. Genres are mandatory and free at the same time, and they are simultaneously static and dynamic. So to give you a more specific definition of genre, I want you all to understand that genres cover all different types of language in all different types of communication or the different spheres of social communication. And of course, this social spheres deals with contexts in which we use genres. So Zane Eggins introduced the notion in linguistics that there are genres and at the same time, there are sub-genres. Subgenres, according to her, refer to how the big genres are realized into actual texts. Example, we have the genre of narration. So how this genre is realized, it could be through the form of short story, novel, or a three-story or a three-line story. And this realizations or the actual texts refer to subgenres. We could also say that we have genres and at the same time, we have the text type. So what are these? Once again, we go back with the example of narration as a genre. Narration is realized through, a dif through different text types such as memes or pictures itself, 
And whatever you post on your IG, Facebook, Twitter accounts, and other social media accounts, you call it as narratives. And all these narratives or posts are now referred to as text types. So therefore, genres are activities in everyday life, be it something that you post online, something which you send to someone through text or email or chat, something which you physically tell someone through interpersonal communication, or something which you write about for someone. Martin and Rose defined genre as a staged, goal-oriented, social activity and i think this definition of genre is more inclusive and conclusive of what genre really is in discourse so again it is staged because it has different stages i mean the component of a message has different parts right and it is goal oriented you have a purpose for telling such, for sending such, for posting something on Facebook, on social media. You have a purpose for writing something to someone. And lastly, it is a social activity because it has the concepts and principles of communication in it. And this social activity is tantamount to interactions. And here comes discourse, or, or rather, here is where discourse comes. And each interaction has stages, as seen in this example. So this is a compositional structure of genres. But specifically for this example, this is a message which is intended to be said or perhaps sent to someone who is celebrating his or her birthday. So, it has different moves. Others could refer to this as stages. That's why earlier, genre was also defined as something which is staged. So, for move one, it consists of address, which is dear friend. Move two consists of greetings, which is happy birthday. Move three, it has wishes, which is may all your dreams and desires come true. Move four, it is characterized by a compliment, which is on this day, I need to say that I have been blessed to have you in my life. And move five, it has complementary clothes, which is yours always. To read this as a single message, it will go this way. Dear friend, happy birthday. May all your dreams and desires come true. On this day, I need to say that I have been blessed to have you in my life. Yours always. If you are simply delivering this message with only an intention to have a heartful birthday greeting for someone, then you have succeeded. But since you are language students, I want you all to understand that this message is considered as a genre. And this message has a purpose. It has stages. It is goal-oriented and it is considered as a social activity. So having been able to point out one by one those characteristics of this message, therefore, this birthday greeting is considered as a genre. So genres are activities that have stages, that have specific purpose or goals, and these are not just activities, but social activities. And I would also like to point out that there are no texts that are genre-less, because whatever you post online, whatever you send online, Whatever you tell or, or you say to someone physically or whatever you write for someone, this all has purpose. These are all social activities. 
and your messages, whether it is told verbally or read, through written form rather and orally, this has stages or components in it. So therefore, they are all genre. So let us now take a look at the significance of genres. Genres are forms of life. These are ways of being. And they are frames for social action. Genres shape the thoughts we form and the communications by which we interact. After all, this is grounded on the very fact that the message that you tell to someone in the communication process is your very genre. Genres organize and structure communication, and they allow us to predict communicative actions, how to respond, what to say after having been able to receive such message. And they also allow us to predict the characteristics of texts and gender roles of their producers and consumers, or genre roles rather, of their producers and consumers. According to Vijay Kumar Bhatia, who is a linguist, practicing genre is almost like playing a game with its rules and conventions. Established genre participants, both writers and readers, are like skillful players who succeed by their manipulation and exploitation of, rather than a strict compliance, with the rules of the game. To learn to speak means to learn to construct utterances, and the better our command of genres, the more freely we employ them, the more perfectly we implement our free speech plan. So it is very important that you know your genre role. You know the genre, you know the role that you are playing in the communication process. And here are the references. So I am hoping that by now, it is clear with you what genre really is and its high relevance to the study of this course as well as its significance in communication. Thank you.